us inside the bullpen podcast episode of 2018 and brahma hockey is coming back nick merrick chad Seward, we are back with another episode chad it's been a bit of a break here how'd you uh hopefully you enjoyed your christmas break and had a little time away uh obviously not focusing on weekend games after the 15th when the brahmas handed it to the shreveport mud bugs but now we're back and Ready to go this weekend against Corpus. There was a, a lot of um, activity during the break, a lot of work up here, uh, which we'll get to. Did go to see Ferdinand. I hope that yes. you did, too. You know, it came out you December know what? 15th. I actually have a uh, movie date tonight, so hopefully that's Ferdinand. One of, either that or Coco. It's, it's good. And uh, the kids got the original Ferdinand book. Did you know it was a book from, like, the they 1920s? Did. They did. Yeah. Yeah, they got that. So that was good over you the know break. You sad? Do you know where I knew that reference from? Hmm. Uh, Blindside. Really? Do you remember that movie? When Never they... saw that movie. Really? Yeah, football doesn't football movie. doesn't yeah it's that and was, plus Mississippi. That's probably my favorite sports movie. I'm just not a big fan of that. Whole Sandra Bullock her acting is so terrible. You're listening to Movie Talk with Nick and Chad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and we had uh, we had some uh, NHL talent here at the uh, Night Tech Sports Center over the break. We did a um, oh yeah I gotta I gotta throw this out there because there's some props to a former Brahma. Uh, I had did a commercial for. Monster Energy out of Russia. Not Monster Energy over here. They just signed um, Alexander Radulov. And um, so they did their whole. So if you are going to Russia in the next year, in 2018 or 2019, and you see at any convenience store, grocery store, or any establishment where Monster Energy is sold, which is called Black Monster over there. Ooh. Interesting story there. We'll get to another time. Should be the Green Monster. Um, So if you go over there and you see. Photos of Radulov, just know that they were taken here inside the Brahma's locker room and on the ice. And um, we had a marathon. They crammed like two years worth of promo shots and videos into three hours because he was tired from coming back from, uh, they played uh, Philly, Philly the night before. Uh, So it was cool. Got to hang out with him a little bit. Interesting to see uh, a bona fide NHL star on the ice out here, you know, um, He's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder was, what he, I wonder what he thought of Brahma Land. He, he, no, he liked Brahma Land. Oh, really? He liked Brahma Land a lot. He uh, he thought it was cool. Um, had a good time. I don't think anybody really saw him in the arena. We we did a Glenn and the crew did a good job of blacking out the windows where nobody could see what was going on. And they did a lot of shooting in the complete pitch black, which I don't understand. But interesting. I just thought that dramatic effect. Like you see the new Bauer commercials and all that jazz. When they're yeah. Like, oh, Patrick Kane and Austin Matthews. Just but it's funny. Like here's the, like the the love I had to throw to a former Brahma. I had to use um, Alexei Solovyev to literally translate a couple emails for me because I'm going back and forth with right this. On. This guy in St. Petersburg, Russia, who's with Monster Energy, and obviously a language barrier there. They do a lot of stuff with English-speaking countries, but when you're emailing, like, sometimes just things come out weird, and then there's, a, like, a little six-hour lag between emails. So it took about a week and a half to put it together, but eventually I reached out to Mr. Solovyev, and I'm like, hey, can you translate these these three emails for me so that I can say what I'm trying to say in your native language? and he said, yeah, no problem. So thank you, Alexi. You helped close the deal. What a guy. Uh, he's a good guy. Good guy. And, it, and he missed Radulov by one day. He was Alexi was here a day after we did that commercial. Really? It would have been really cool to have Alexi out there. And actually, he would have skated with him. He would yeah. have probably ended up being in the commercial. Really? They need yeah. somebody? Yeah. I mean, it, huh. uh, Radulov said uh, to me and Glenn DeSico here, he said, uh, Put your pads on. Let's go. And if you're any good, the stars need you. Now, obviously, <laughs> that would have gone very poorly. But, yeah, it was cool. And uh, so as soon as we see some of those promos. Oh, and the other thing was the, the photo crew came from Moscow. So when Radulov saw them and knew that he could talk in the language, he, he perked up r- really big time. So, oh, yeah. I can imagine that. Yeah. Being in Dallas, Texas. You know, yeah. Like Russians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had that. And, um you know, a few other crazy things have been going on here behind the scenes um, during the Christmas break. Um, did you uh, have a Christmas break other than your wife nearly cutting her hand off? <laughs> yeah, true. That's a whole different story. Uh, but we'll save the outside of the podcast. Uh, family came to town. They were here for about a week. Had a great time with them. Um, it was weird doing a ton of work from home rather than uh, seeing the rink too much. So sorry for everybody here who didn't have the 
deal with me at least. At least that's a good good and bad news there. Uh, headed out to a quick trip with my college buddy in Cancun. Um, that was always a good time. A little unconventional wintry Christmas spot. But then I come back and obviously I knew that Jen and uh, Knut Anderson's here were going over to Cabo. So we were pretty close. I mean, I, well, maybe not really. What we we were we were different sides of the the ocean and the Gulf, but um, that's okay. Uh, obviously, a great great two weeks off for the guys. And, you know, I had a chance to chat with them a little bit since they came back. They just had their first two day skate um, today when we're recording this on uh, Wednesday, so I haven't had a chance to talk to uh, some of the new guys yet. We'll get to that in a minute. And I don't know. It's just good good to be back in the swing of things, though. Pretty pretty low key break. Didn't want to do anything crazy, even though we we were traveling a little bit that week of Christmas into New Year's, it was just a whole, just chill and be home. Yeah. It's always good sometimes just to chill. 100%. Um, apparently the phone lines were working pretty, pretty over time during the Christmas break. Man, were they ever? Uh, so I guess we should probably begin there since that's the, the elephant in the room everybody wants to talk about. Yep. Um, we, we'll go ahead and go tell us, tell us what it's all about there, Nick. So it looks like, uh, for those who missed it, the coaches ended up trading a uh, two-for-two swap with the Amarillo Bulls. Alternate captain Austin O'Rourke and forward Jared Doman are going to Amarillo to f- more than likely finish their junior hockey career there as a bull. And uh, the Brahmas in return get Stephen Ippery and John Russell, who are two forwards as well, um, and producing in terms of offensive numbers for the Bulls this season. And uh, Amarillo made a move. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we're about to dive into the knowledge of that. But um, the Bulls were in fifth place and ended up trading two of their top four f- forwards to the Brahmas. Uh, the only weird thing I see about it is uh, there's no no youth being sent back to Amarillo because usually a team, if they want to make a big move like that, that's essentially a blockbuster of trading away two of your top four scores on the season uh, from the point production side that you're usually going to get somebody who could stick with the next year. But for Doman and O'Rourke, it's their last year of juniors. So um, the biggest thing I could think of is they really needed leadership. Um, and they obviously went and got two pretty good leaders. Um, one of them being a captain for the Brahmas. So definitely a, it's a, it's a crazy news chat. I know we heard a ton of talk, probably yeah. more negative and, and shocked more than positive well, uh, from the fan base. So we kind of wanted to spend a little time chatting about that. Yeah. And, uh, I think I, I will loosely quote team uh, president Frank Trezera, who uh, he and I spoke with Austin as he was on his way out. Frank uh, just kept reiterating to Austin that he's part of our hockey family. He's part of hockey. I mean, he was very much a part of the championship team. Yep. Uh, he will forever be emblazed on the Robertson Cup. I mean, he is and always will be, you know, a Brahma at heart. Um, so, you know, it was a tough one. Frank kept saying to, to Austin that that was a, a super tough move, one that Dan labored over. And I can tell you, as a guy who's worked with Dan for over a decade, he doesn't typically labor over trades too much. Usually yes. it's like, okay, you take this guy, I'll take yes. that guy, thanks, and see you next year. Um, he struggled with this one. And, uh, you know, that just tells you how much Austin was loved. But as you look through the, the feedback, I didn't see Twitter, but we'll just specifically we'll, we'll mention some – some folks on Facebook, um, you know, Brian Redmond said, what the hell are they thinking? Trading O'Rourke. Uh, I think that was, the, that's a gut. That's a, that's a Big comment time. from the gut, you know, like, whoa, it really upset you. Um, but I think, I think all of us had that just knowing he was a captain. And just to show how smart our, our, our fans are, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Michael uh, Ross Fitch was immediately on it, and he's like, hey, I think they're thinking that we need offense. Russell's in the top five for goal scoring, and the Brahmas have the fewest goals in the entire league. That's a that's a fan and sponsor, by the way. Use top cotton printing for screen printing or embroidery. Uh, but, yeah, Fitch, um, he nailed it. We're in the bottom of the league in goal scored. Yep. And you can't blame it all on Austin O'Rourke, but that's what Amarillo yeah. wanted. And to give up those big pieces, that's what it took. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of. Well, I think I think uh, Amarillo was looking for a captain. Um, and I think they, they want to prime O'Rourke to finish that way as a true captain for the Bulls. 
Rahms will get a chance to see him and Doman uh, two more times in the regular season, so that's always interesting and fun when you get the matchups against former teammates. Uh, one in February, one in March, the last one being family weekend in March, but that's well down the road. Oh, that'd uh, be throw some good spice in for family weekend. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> But I, I think uh, I, I think everybody kind of had that gut reaction too. Even when when Dan and Justin broke the news to me, and they called me down to the office on uh, Tuesday after after the new year, um, they were kind of like, "Well, we made a trade. Here's what it is. If you want to get the release out, go for it." And uh, they were kind of like, "It it was tough. <laughs> they they didn't sugarcoat it to me either." And basically to re- to reiterate what you said, um, coaches obviously always care for the players, but they they somehow find a really good way of being a little bit unattached because they know it's also a business at the same time and uh, their business is making a good team. So they have to do what it takes. And obviously the Doman and, and O'Rourke fell in line of exactly what the bulls wanted. And um, I know even the coaches were trying to weasel different ways around it and maybe try to get draft picks and stuff instead. But um, ultimately the Brahmas had too many players as well. So they're going to have to make some more moves. Um, so this, this trade probably isn't the last one we're going to see even this month. Um, the trade deadline is usually mid-February, but coming back from from break, Jakob Sirota is back skating with the team. Mm-hmm. Owen Ferris is now back from his stint with USHL. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there could be another USHL stint coming up for another player, and Chase Pletsky, who's um, the product of the Green Bay Gamblers, if they choose, they want to see him for a little bit because um, that's totally their right. Uh, but now with those two guys in Sirota and Owen Ferris coming back in particular, when you look at the roster on December 15th, those guys weren't on it. So now with those two players coming back, you have to figure two players to move, and the Brahmas did that. But the problem is they moved O'Rourke and Doman, but they also brought back two players. Right. So there, there's still a little shuffling I think is going to happen in the locker room. And um, like you said, it's been a busy start to the new year for the coaches. The lines, I'm sure, are going crazy. The emails are probably being blown up right now. Yeah. Um, and it's it's that it's you know it's that exciting time. It's it's always terrible because you don't want to see players that fans enjoy moving on, and because uh, because you wish you could cheer them on from from the home barn. But obviously the fans still wish them the best. I saw plenty on Twitter too. Oh that, yeah, lots uh, of love. They were going at it and they were saying, "Oh my gosh, they had the same kind of gut reaction." But then they were like, "Well, we wish you the best and welcome, Stephen and John. We can't wait to meet you." Um, so it's you know it's obviously a good thing and and here's the the funny thing about it which we Nick you and I talked about uh, yesterday or whenever we learned of this we are as Michael Ross Fitch pointed out we are last in the league in goal scored but we're we we're not out of a playoff spot we're right. sitting fine so it's just imagine what we can do if we do start finding the back of the net more regularly um, I mean I would imagine that one of those patented Dan Wildfong win streaks is uh, is near in our future. Yep. And uh, and then another funny thing we talked about. Um, now we have two Harvard commits. Yes. When was the last time we had two commits to the same team playing for us? You know, I don't. You and know, I had to think about it. We had to think about it, but the answer was pretty good. Which was who was it? It was Sebastian Vidmar and Jay Kupski. Right, and they were not bad of a pair. No. In fact, roommates in college. No. Yes. <laughs> No, Sebastian was, was here no. over the uh, the last game too. I know. Yeah, he he uh, he came back for his little break. Um, with his, he stay with the Rainsfords, I think. Uh, probably. Yeah, I'm sure he stayed or with the Old Handlers. Village. Oh, the Handlers. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, the Handlers. Um, but yeah, so so Kubsky and Vidmar, uh, two guys who will most definitely see some time in the the big show at some point here when they round out their college careers. So. Gibson, you know, you know, NHL teams are looking at him, right. and then, um, of course, the the new guy, the new guy, who who will be new guy until <laughs> until we get the nameplate and everything worked Apparently, out. I think he is probably new guy in the locker. Room. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But so you know, it's a uh, it's exciting. It's a it's a good move for the team. Yep. And uh, it's a good time to be a Brahma fan because we're. We've got a lot of home games here. I know not many in January. We've got just two, so you have no excuse to miss the January 5th or 6th. But come February, we'll be here pretty much every weekend, and uh, the boys will like that, and we're primed to move up in the standings and see uh, see how we do that hockey. <laughs> we got to do that hockey. We got to do sure. that hockey. Well, before we move on, uh, obviously, fans, if you see John and Steven this weekend, Definitely give them a warm welcome to Brahmaland. I'm, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Um, 
personally, I have honestly I haven't even had a chance to talk to him yet because uh, we came to the office today and the Brahmas were doing a two day practice. So they had a morning and an afternoon skate with a break and a little workout in between. So they've been busy beavers today and uh, I couldn't really interfere with that, um, but just seeing them skate for the first time, I did watch a little bit of practice while I was snapping some photos and catching up with uh, Aiden and Cynthia behind the scenes, but look look good. They should be ready to go. Uh, John, you know, mentioned he was top five scoring. He's actually second in goal scoring um, in the entire league. He has 12 power play goals in the season, which is the best in the league as well. Teams know how, uh, the Brahma fans know how terrible our power play's been. I know the coaches know how bad the power play's been, so... Uh, Ipri also, I think, has nine power play assists, and he put up 16 points, was one of their top scorers last year, Uh, was a South Division All-Rookie team member. Now he's playing for the Brahmas in second year. So it it should be a good match. It should be a good match. Yeah, it should be a good match, and uh, anything that can improve our power play, I think, is is welcome as much as it hurts. But uh, Only one chance to see the team in January now, huh? Yeah. there's There's some big things coming up. There's some big things coming up. So speaking of coming up, Nick. As we segue so we don't keep the fans too long, uh, although our listeners are dropping immediately now that we're passing on past the O'Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, January 5th, the next the next home game, we have uh, fun stuff going on in the audio department, which is um, DJ EJ will be using us, uh, the Nitec Sports Center, and Brahmas versus uh, Ice Rays as a field test for what he's going to be doing in Pyeongchang, South Korea, for the Winter Olympics this year. Um, it's going to be awesome. If you haven't he, – he's only worked a couple games, and he's kind of done them incognito. Uh, he's got a an, yeah. an, an underling, a protege, if you will, Eric, who's been uh, doing a great job for him. But uh, EJ, of course, the DJ for the Dallas Cowboys. We talked about him when we, we brought him on board. Uh, yes. A big pickup for us. He is uh, working for the Olympics, and uh, he will be doing all women's and men's Olympic games a long time. He's going to be working, pumping tunes, and yes. he's he's going to have, you know, different goal songs for every country, different songs popular and indicative of that country. Um, here, I think he's going to be practicing more on what you're going to hear if you were to go over there and see Team USA play. Uh, including like the USA warm up mix, and um, I mean he's got free reign to do whatever he wants. So goal song, it's it's all up to DJ EJ uh, this weekend and uh, or this Friday, and I would say check it out if you haven't got a ticket yet. You, you definitely want to get one yes. um, or ten, whatever you whatever's left. Um, cause this gonna be a good it's gonna be a good time. You looking forward to it? I'm really looking forward to it. We yeah, so we want to have a better experience. Well, that's pretty darn good experience. I need- do, well, not to interrupt, but I do love the DJ Lee Rafferty space people when we get scored on. That's the all time ultimate um, visiting team goal song. I think EJ personally, I think he should take that to the Olympics, <laughs> but. He, you know, he has uh, a lot of integrity. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be able to anyways because he's not a... He's he not going to be, be playing yeah. chimpanzee riding a Segway. <laughs> no, because no, if, uh, what is it, if Russia's playing Canada, you know, if Canada scores a Canadian song, Russia scores a Russian song. Right, right. They don't They don't want <laughs> to hear um, Boogie Boogie Hedgehog or any of the fun stuff that... I mean, uh, well, we love to hear it here. And you know what? Lee Rafferty, I love him for uh, for having the, the stones to play that in an arena full of people. And stick to it. We got a lot of requests. I bet we were responsible for a lot of hits on YouTube for the song Space People. That could be true, actually. I think we've had at least half a dozen. What's that visiting goal song? What is that terrible song that you play when the, it sounds they, like a they cat wanted, screeching? Probably because they want to know so they can pass it on to their friends. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. You're listen not going to this. believe what they play. Yeah. It's pretty good. So after uh, this weekend, we are going to, well, the. Not necessarily we, you and I, but we, the Brahmas, will be boarding an airplane. Yes, an airplane with jet engines and all and flying to sunny, tropical Fairbanks, Alaska. (laughs) Yeah, the exact opposite of tropical. I mean, it can't be worse than the weather here has been this past week. It's It's pretty brutal here. somebody posted. Oh, yeah, it was warmer there. It was warmer there. Was that Rachel? It might have been. Maybe it was Rachel speaking one of the one of the uh, producers for the hockey TV side. But yeah, I mean, either way, they're going to see snow. That's a hundred percent. Oh, easily. 
And uh, I'm gonna bring long johns, lots uh, of them. Absolutely, flip flops and t-shirts probably not <laughs> necessary uh, on this trip. <laughs> you leave those behind. But I, I mean, I've heard from other guys who have been on that trip, and um, you know, teams who've been up there that like that they could have the opportunity to do a practice outside, which would be kind of Ooh, fun. that'd be really old cool. school. Um, you know, depending on the weather, obviously. Uh, have Cynthia snap some picks for us while we're absolutely. Um, and then you know it's 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 going to be a good team bonding experience. I mean, these yes. road trips that we go on usually, you go on them all, Nick. You you pull into a town on Friday, a couple hours before the game. Maybe you drop your stuff off at the hotel. Maybe you don't. Maybe yep. you go right to to work. Um, and then you sleep. You sleep. You get up the next day. You eat. You sleep and you play and you go home. Yep. Here it's going to be more of a. You're going to play the games, and then we got a few days before we head down to Kenai River. Okay. And um, um, play down there, and, and then after those games, we'll get on a plane, and we'll fly back here to get on a bus and go to Topeka, Kansas, and that'll be that. The Alaskan teams, we've been working um, with their management. When they when they come down here, they're going to be, you know, we're going to take care of them, give them a little Texas hospitality, and I think that they're going to, Really be looking forward to that trip as they come down here in late February. They've yep. probably just about had enough of the winter weather. And then by February, it'll probably be 95 degrees here. Also true. Hopefully. Who knows? Yeah, hopefully. Um, well, hopefully the fans get a chance to go up there. If, if you're so into it and want to get a different experience, that's obviously a pretty cool one. I know it's not the easiest trip to make, so uh, just shout out to the uh, Butlers. I know they're going to be making yeah. one one weekend up to Fairbanks. Couldn't make the Kenai trip, but just the fact that there will be some – Promise support in the stands. Obviously, I'm sure the team will super appreciate that. They're leaving on the 10th of January, and I believe it's literally the full two weeks. I don't think they come back until the 22nd, 23rd, yeah. that Monday or Tuesday, uh, when they'll fly back from Kenai, which I'm assuming they'll go through Anchorage to come back. Yeah. Fairbank. One of those two I spots. I don't know. I don't know. Man, my geography is bad. Some patch of ice somewhere. They're gonna I should have studied. I have a jet. <laughs> But it's cool. I mean, obviously, it's a chance for the, the team, like you said, to bond. Yeah. Um, they'll come back, and then the Brahmas will get finally a new face in uh, February and March to see the Ice Dogs and the Brown Bears when they make their trip to Texas. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be awesome. And uh, I, I like it that we've got a couple new teams coming in. I think that's great. Uh, also, when they come back from the trip, we're going to have, of course, the big casino night. The casino jerseys, casino jersey auction. That's going to be really cool. Yep. Uh, we've seen those jerseys. I think they look cool for a specialty jersey. They're nice. It, they're not anywhere near as cheesy and over the top as <laughs> I would have personally made them for Vegas. I mean, you don't you got to keep it clean a little bit. Right? There's no Elvis Presley. There's no um, uh, showgirls. There's no, uh, you know, all the things, the classic things from Vegas. But it is cool. It is cool. And then I also, we all saw the uh, St. Paddy's Day design. 100% we do. And those are very cool as well. They're, uh, they, they would rival last year's, I think. I think they're going to look really good on ice, too. Oh, so absolutely. Both, both specialty jerseys are uh, absolutely looking real sharp. They're going to be really good. So we've got a couple specialty auctions coming up. And Casino Night, you're going to hear a little bit more about that as we get closer to it here. But uh, that's going to be really cool. We've talked to the casino company. Um, the Texas hold I'm sure you're going to get involved in the Texas Hold'em tournament as soon as you're done with the broadcast. I can pick, enough time to squeeze over there. I can picture you as a uh, a big player in the Texas Hold'em tournament, but uh, uh, it's going to be fun. Like craps, roulette, the whole the whole ball of wax, everything you would expect in a casino without the cigarette smoke <laughs> and uh, without and the, the overpriced cig- drinks. Overpriced drinks. That's true. Without the overpriced drinks and cigarette smoke, because we don't allow smoking here at Night Tex. And technically, actual or in cash. The state of Texas. That would be illegal. What's that? We couldn't, we couldn't actually give out cash prizes because that would be illegal. 100% illegal. <laughs> can't, can't do that. So, so there, there, are, there are prizes and some really cool prizes. We've got uh, a cruise. There's a one carat diamond involved if you yep. want some bling. Yep. Uh, there's all sorts of good prizes. Uh, the Dallas Stars just sent over a couple team signed sticks. I heard about that. Yep. Pretty Very cool. Pretty exciting. Um, and uh, I hear we're partnering with Dash for those as well. Dash, so. you'll see stuff on the Dash auction. Even if you're in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and you want to bid on some uh, of these auctions, I think you can on some of them. Some I mean, them. if you're up in Yellowknife Northwest Territories and you're like, hey, I could use me a uh, Dallas Stars team signed stick. 
We need another yellow knife uh, trip. We do. Any recruiting trails taking us that way? I think all the runways are iced over for the winter, <laughs> but uh, and the moose are really moving around a lot right all now. The moose and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you don't want to get stuck in a plane that just ran into a moose like uh, Walt Ruff. That's tough. Tough that time. Tough, that tough times. Tough. R.I.P. Moosey McGee. So that's a lot of exciting things going on. We'll, we'll clue the fans in more on uh, Casino Night 2 as we get closer. That's February 3rd. Um, by the way, that Brahma's game is going to be, I think, a 6 p.m. start on the 3rd. We haven't Yeah, we've got to re-formally, finalize that. We'll, we'll, we'll refinalize it, re-announce it, re-share it, repost it, republish it, everything. So the fans are aware on that day. Uh, but the hot game is going to be a little earlier. That way, if you want to go over and, and enjoy the Casino Night festivities, while the post-game jersey auction is happening, you're more than welcome to do that. Absolutely. That's why they bumped it up from 7.30 to maybe 6 or something like that. And I think we're going we're gonna to try to do something a little bit more over the top with that auction. Like maybe I, my vision is a little bit more of a WWE-style intro for each player as they come go. out to the auction floor, maybe get a little smoke going and, and not necessarily lasers, but some sort of like, you know, WWE-type yeah, effect. Yeah, I hear you. With over the top announcing of their names and uh, uh, maybe some inflated statistical numbers just to pump up the crowd. With 15 knockouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I In think the right corner. We're going to get Norgard on that one. He does a great job with that kind of stuff. He would love that. He would eat that up. Yeah, I think he would. Well, really, that's about all we have to say about that. Um, what do you got to say? What do you got? What do you got for the, the group here, Nick? We, 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 we covered a good amount. We covered a good amount, yeah. Hey, we, we are still talking about doing our uh, NHL 18 tournament. Oh, yes. A little, a little more team building at yes. some point. And uh, there's a few things uh, coming down the pipe here in Brahma's hockey world that uh, if they come to fruition will be very cool. Uh, a couple of new... I wouldn't say theme nights, but like, uh, what do you want to say? Off campus activities? Sure. If the golf tournament's great, but not everybody plays golf. Right. So we'll find some stuff that more people do. Yep. Yep. And I'm we'll- behind. I'm behind all of them, as is everybody here, trying Absolutely. to make it finalized. Um, and uh, yeah, there may- you go. Maybe maybe a new Chuck a Puck prize coming in the yeah we got uh, coming weeks too. Trying yep. to work on that. Maybe new Chuck a Puck prize coming. Um, maybe several new Chuck a Puck prizes coming. Who knows? The sky is the limit when new it comes year, to new chucking us. pucks. Uh, but anyway, that's that's been a good time today. And uh, this is that moment where we swerve all over the lanes of the road here and Meow. crash this car Meow. right into the side of a building.